Okay, so it's on, um, it, it's, uh, it's really, it's on waiting times, and what we're trying to do is to work out um, what factors are driving um, the determination of waiting times for particular patients, in particular whether there are discrete components that we can, we can think of as discrimination. Um, and so, we know that the objective of Medicare is to provide accessible healthcare for all Australians and, and state governments um, provide uh, free in-hospital um, care and that these, these, uh, the demand for these free treatments is controlled, is rationed by waiting lists. I noticed that you've had a lot of articles in the paper this week on waiting times uh, in Victorian hospitals. I assume part of that has to do with the upcoming election, um, but certainly there's enormous number of articles on waiting times uh, in, in around Australia, if you, if you search on these sorts of things. Um, so what we're interested in as, is whether the non-clinical factors influence people's waiting times, uh, and in particular, um, the socioeconomic status is going to this region, variable and socioeconomic status and see whether these impact on, on waiting times. So we're going to use decomposition analysis um, in order to determine, to, to attribute the variation in waiting times uh, by, and determine whether the non-clinical factors like CIFA, so the socioeconomic area that, that patients reside in, uh, remoteness area and area health service for some sort of delivery things influence uh, waiting times. Now, we're going to use two techniques. Um, and I know we've got an hour, so I'm not going to go into these in great detail. There's a working paper that's available on the SHARE website when, uh, to go into these. So we're going to use the standard line to OARCA um, decomposition technique, which is based on a linear model. So all of the standard assumptions apply. Um, we know that there's a, a non-invariant assumption, so that the choice of the reference group is arbitrary. So this, this uh, has been used a lot to look at male and female uh, waiting equality and so on, and to look at the components that are attributable to the endowments of the individuals and, and the components that are due to the different treatment of individuals, like the coefficients on these variables. We use a pool model because, um, so that we're not picking one group or the other, and in particular because we have a lot of, we have a lot of comparisons <coughs> that we're going to do, um, and a pool model can be used on the assumption of no discrimination. We're also going to do, um, use a Donato four times the Mur reweighting technique, which you know, so the OARCA line can look, look at the mean, and this allows us to look at the impact of different variables across the distribution. Okay, so blind or differences in expected times can be due to different clinical factors or non-clinical factors, um, and there's an endowment component. So these are the differences in what we're going to call the clinical factors influencing health status and then a treatment component, which is differences in the coefficients on the endowments between the two groups. And so we can decompose the differences in expected waiting time into this endowment, endowment component and then a treatment component. And we're going to use a pooled model. Uh, in the Donato for time of Miller decomposition, this extends the technique um, of a single point mean based on decomposition. And we're interested in um, what happens across the distribution. So we will get a mean result, but we want to know where in the distribution is really driving differences in means if that's what we find. Um, in particular, it may be true that clinical lead may drive things at one end of the distribution, but other factors may drive differences at the other end of the distribution, and that's indeed what we find. Okay. Um, so what we do is we construct a counterfactual distribution of waiting time, um, and we then, so we, we re-weight re, re the distribution of one group as uh, characteristics in order to create the distribution of the other group, the counterfactual group, and then we decompose the differences. So it's based on matching technique. Um, so it's about you know, the probability of being in one group or another. Uh, the distribution of waiting times the integral over the joint distribution and the individual characteristics. And we're going to create a counterfactual waiting time distribution for, for patients in group B, which reweights their characteristics in order to uh, reduce the distribution of the other group. Right. 
So, the, the factor that we're going to use to um, do this is the, is the matching technique. So, it's the probability of being in one group or the other. So, we've got a reweighting factor. What is it? Psi? Someone psi? Is it psi? Someone which knows? No. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> which is um, uh, the this difference in these two uh, probabilities. We can use Bayes' rule to turn this into these probabilities. And then we can do this decomposition based on this in order to get this unexplained bit and explained bit. So the explained bit, this is when we reweight the characteristics of the A group in order to approximate the distribution of group B. So we're saying if we can reweight, um, then this bit is explained. So it's like the endowment in the in the Oaka Blinder model. And then what we're left with is the unexplained component. So that's, that's the, the approach. Um, and of course the assumptions needed for matching the fire, mean conditional independence, and common support. But in this area we don't have any problem with common support. So, <coughs> what we've got is we've got a lot of underutilised patient level waiting time data in this country. If you look at just about every um, article in, in, the, in the press about waiting times, it's always about a couple of measures. Median waiting times. So areas are compared, or hospitals are compared, uh, states are compared in terms of their median weight, and also the percentage of patients who wait more than 12 months. But and that's the one that lots of the articles have been about in the last little while. Right now, but really, there's loads of individual data uh, that's really largely unexplored that people don't look, don't you know investigate very much. Of course, you've got to get it. Um, but once you've got it, there's, there's a wealth of information in this individual data. So we're using inpatient and match waiting list data from public hospitals in New South Wales for 2004-05. So we've got almost all admissions, elected admissions to public hospitals uh, in 2004-05. This is for stays that were completed in that year. So it's the patient went in and actually completed the inpatient stay in that year. Okay, so it's a lot of uh, observations. We're going to only, for this analysis, we're only going to use hospitals that tr treat acute illnesses. Um, and the, uh, so our sample is about 200,000 patients. Um, now we, we know the postcodes of each patient, so we're going to use that post postcode information to uh, link the socioeconomic status of the region that where the where the person lives to um, to the hospital data. Okay. Um, we're also going to use that for ARIA, that's remoteness, the remoteness index, um, and well, of course, we also know what area of service there is. Um, so. so, clinical need. Our measures of clinical need are going to be the surgical procedure the number of diagnoses, the urgency assignment, and the patient's age and gender. So they're all variables about, pretty much about the patient. It's not about the system, it's about the patient. Okay. Um, <coughs> urgency in New South Wales is, is, in our data, is a little bit different to most of the country because there are four categories of urgency should be treated within seven days, within 30 days, within 90 days, or within a year. Okay, so in, in most, most of the other states and most of the reporting at the national level, uh, the lowest category is 30 days. Uh, I, I don't know how much that will survive. So, is it, um, <coughs> so we, we don't have any information on the patient's education level or anything, and that's why No, we, 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 ask, we don't. Previous. We don't have any information. So this is completely administrative data, right, and we, we have not very many details about only where they live. No. Right. So we could also put in education and so on. And the area. Region, but, yeah. but education comes in very much into the super index anyway. Right, so um, both income and education. Yes. Like age and sex? Wait, type, nothing? Nothing. Nothing. No, nothing at, at, at that level. Mm -hmm. That's why in the next one we want to link the 45 and up data with the 